Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we'll be talking about this potentially significant ice and winter or snowstorm. Um, it is already taking place across portions of the Southern Plains and it will continue spanning or expanding into the Midwest, Upper Plains and portions of the Northeast. And following this system, there could be another storm that could drop a bit of snow for the Northeast. Doesn't look too significant as of now, but the models have just recently started to pick up on this. So I will go over that briefly. Um, if you guys enjoy this type of content, enjoy the weather, consider subscribing. Um, obviously, it's your choice. Consider liking the video, if, especially if you're a returning viewer. Check out the other videos and let's start talking about this uh, potential, two, potential two storms. All right, so we're going to start talking about this ice and snowstorm that we could be potentially uh, looking towards as we approach New Year's. I have seen a lot of uh, kind of misguiding information about this storm, so I do want to kind of clear some things up. And it really, there's been a lot of people trying to kind of stir up panic and uh, hypeness and overhyping the system. While this is going to be a significant and powerful system, there's no way around that. It's not going to be uh, life-threatening uh, for, for most. So let's take a look at this, all right? The GFS model run is what we are looking at right now and start timing this out. It's the latest model of the GFS and look at this. So we have a bit of snow into Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana. There was a bit of snow into southwestern Missouri and northwestern, sorry, northeastern Oklahoma today and that has really pulled away and is looking less significant at this point. Maybe an inch. Um, across Ohio, Indiana, and into southern Illinois today, but again, that also seems limited, but it could easily overperform across certain locations that see a bit of that banding or a bit of that prolonged uh, snow falling for a brief period of time, um, and I said prolonged and brief, but basically, um, it's going to be heavy snow, so you see an hour of this, you could quickly pick up an inch. Regardless, it moves away, uh, there's going to be some snow across Canada, Quebec, Montreal, maybe picking up on some snow into Ottawa, again, mixing with a lot of rain, uh, Toronto mainly kind of already out of it, uh, a, bit of, a bit of rain for sure, maybe a bit of snow on the backside, not looking too significant. As it pulls away into Canada, that's it for the first wave, we got through the first wave, everybody, so I guess uh, give yourself a pat on the back for that. Um, regarding the the first wave i do want to speak quickly of it in terms of the snowfall amounts and overall what happened what didn't happen so what did happen that was kind of as expected was an overperformance across iowa notice eastern nebraska got over half a foot a lot of iowa there's several locations that did get up to a foot right mainly though in that 8 to 12 inch range across much of central uh this stripe of snow right here 8 to 12 inches was pretty common right and then as it moved into central uh, illinois northern central it quickly stirred upwards and noticed that a lot of snow kind of got cut off here so it did slightly underperform if you will across illinois but again it's it was you know the forecast range was three to six and that's really where the amounts fell they weren't really towards the six they were more towards the three and four and five um there were some five inch amounts you can see right there but really into southern wisconsin the amounts grew quite a bit and into michigan again there was a bit of snow into northern ohio northern indiana southwestern minnesota um southeastern minnesota did a kind of get a bit of a lull in the precipitation, only picking up around 1 to 2 inches. But then northern Minnesota got around 5 to 6 inches. So did southwestern Minnesota, um, maybe a bit less, uh, to 3 to 4. Generally, though, a decent event and did pretty much as forecasted, right? So that was that. Notice that the highest amount from this storm fell, obviously, in the Colorado mountains, up over 2 feet of snow, 20 six inches which is obviously a very significant event though they have had events that were bigger before so this wasn't a tragic catastrophic event by any means so let's go back to the gfs and let's start timing this out we have this low pressure right here which is already dropping a lot of snow and rain across the sierra madre in mexico this is kind of combining with the moisture moisture from the gulf of mexico right and a lot of snow a lot of rain depending on elevation and the exact track of the storm and notice this does move into the northern mexico southern texas area does not look like if eastern texas will be getting much snow out of this say dallas houston those large cities 
maybe further up north right right there in two portions of the panhandle uh, southern san angelo area picking up a bit of snow right i don't know my exact orientation of cities in texas but um anywhere if you divide the you know the state in half anywhere east for really forget about the snow chances anywhere west there's a pretty good chance so notice as this moves into oklahoma into missouri into illinois kansas we do see a bit of ice developing and we start seeing a huge surge of precipitation towards the north right the system starts redeveloping itself but the thing is i've seen many people say a massive you know extreme ice storm very large to be honest it looks as if much of the united states is not looking down the barrel of a very significant system it's uh, gonna be um well should i say gonna be significant right but it's not gonna be a crippling ice storm um i don't think there will be many areas that get over half an inch of ice if that and the reason for that is well the models look impressive it looks as if there's a lot of ice on the forecast in illinois indiana look at that that's a classic ice storm the thing is temperatures will be very warm aloft so the freezing rain will be cold right and it will stick as freezing rain would to anything but the surfaces are going to be so marginal that really that brief window is going to be three to four hours of freezing rain which obviously will stay still make roads disastrous as it takes very little but power lines power outages don't seem to be that big of an issue across much of the united states the only area that will get hardest hit is just southwest of kansas they, they could see up to half an inch and obviously even a small small deviation in temperatures can make that area grow much bigger you know um, into kansas and into illinois or much smaller Again, though, an inch of ice, uh, I've seen some people say two, three inches of ice. I don't think that will be occurring with this system whatsoever. The three inches of ice is just not supported by this at all. Um, an inch of ice is already a um, long, uh, long shot. Half an inch seems more like it, and maybe three-fourths if the uh, you know everything comes together for a great uh, ice storm. Again, I don't know if they'll even issue ice storm warnings. May, maybe not. I'm not sure. That's up to the National Weather Service. Notice that into Illinois, uh, southern Chicago, Ohio, this will not be a huge uh, ice storm. The GFS is obviously just one model, right? But what it does is it brings in a few hours of freezing rain. But uh, the models may be doing a bit of too warm of this air, right? So a lot of this may be actually falling more as snow on the backside. That will bring a lot of snow into central Missouri, northern central Kansas City, eastern Kansas, right? Into Oklahoma, southern Iowa, into northern Illinois. You can see that this has shifted down towards the south. It's not too impressive, right? I mean, the snow is going to be brief, moderate, and heavily. But it, there's not going to be a foot of snow from this, especially across Illinois, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan. Towards Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, maybe getting those higher amounts up to 7 inches isolated, if not more. And then towards Texas, up to a foot. But really, as this moves into the northeast, the same trend. The ice kind of is there. It's going to be a hazard. It's going to be a significant storm as an overall threat. But for one given area, it should not be crippling. Notice uh, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, into southern Canada, we do see some snow and maybe a bit of intensification as this pushes off. No, uh, for those wondering, this will definitely not be a snow event for Massachusetts or New York. And I say definitely, while it is 60 hours out, uh, you know, it, it's, it, I don't know, it just, it won't shift that far to the south across Boston. You know, these areas are rain-free or uh, snow-free from this event. Maine, though, northern New Hampshire, northern Ron to northern upstate could definitely get a bit more snow as this adjusts itself. So that big of a shift will be hard to see into the coastal areas, which, again, I, I, I'm just excluding at this point. So in terms of snowfall amounts for this system, right, take a look at these total snowfall. This is what it shows. Again, this is uh, including sleet, so most of this will not be snow. In fact, let's just take a look at the total positive snow depth change to avoid confusion. Um, there we go. Again, uh, that uh, is most likely not going to be happening. And even if that does happen, I mean, one to two inches is nothing significant. Notice Texas, Oklahoma, there is up to uh, a foot of snow across some locations. And notice that it does dwindle as we push into the Illinois, Michigan area. Now, this is granted one model. If you were to take a look back at the GFS from six hours ago, generally showing similar things, right? 6C showing, showing very similar thing. And uh, again, the newest model run is the 18Z, and that is what it shows. Now
Now let's take a look at some other models. The Canadian. Canadian did a better job with the first system, and what it shows is generally the same. The track of snow into Illinois, Michigan, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and also into upstate northeast. Again, I don't think that Boston will be seeing much snow out of this, or even Massachusetts out of this system. Um, but again, uh, let's take a look at the MSLP precip and frozen, and take a glance at this, what this Canadian does. Notice, it shows more ice, so this would be more of an ice maker, more of a potential threat, right? I will show you the ice accumulations in just a bit, by the way. Notice, snow on the backside, a lot of rain, that will be a concern, flooding rain. But, um, again, snow, rain mixing in. Wherever that freezing rain does end up falling, it most likely will be just too warm to see significant ice acerations. Ice acerations. And, um, I, I had to repeat myself twice there, I didn't know if I said that right. But uh, the thing is that, uh, you know, the ice will accumulate a tenth, two tenths, maybe three tenths across the harder hit areas. And that will, uh, that's likely, and that obviously will cause a lot of uh, travel headaches on the roadways and just slippery conditions everywhere you go. But again, uh, trees, down power lines, a potential, especially across the Missouri area. But as you move into Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, uh, it doesn't seem... Awfully uh, impressive. Maybe a bit more snowy on the uh, snow side, right? Michigan into Illinois and into the Northeast. You could see the Canadian does mix in a bit more snow across Boston into New York, upstate New York, and not New York City. But again, uh, maybe maybe an inch of snow. That's about it. Uh, if any snow does fall, it could be from this wave into tonight. But again, even that looks very uh, starved. The event that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that could be more significant for the Northeast. Well, you can see that still drops quite a bit of snow into Maine, so uh, Augusta, Bangor, a lot of those locations could be seeing a bit of snow into southeastern Canada. This is the event we could be watching for. The models just started to pick up on this. Notice we see a bit of light snow into Michigan, Indiana, Ohio. Kind of reminds us of that big nor'easter we saw uh, at the beginning of December. But again, it doesn't seem to have that much forcing. Um, but definitely they do develop it pretty strongly. And some models do bring a bit of snow into this area. And just to show you from that, uh, there could be a few inches. So definitely something to watch for. Notice right there into Connecticut. Even New York City could pick up a few. So definitely keep an eye out for that. We, may, we will be talking about that as we go forward i do want to quickly go back to the canadian but on pivotal weather where they can show us uh these uh i think these ice accumulations yes freezing rain quantitative precipitation forecast i mean if you were to look at the models right you would just say this is a crippling event one to two inches again most likely not happening uh I, I would say that maybe up to most of Illinois will be seeing anywhere from a tenth to two tenths of an inch, maybe three tenths, but it's just, it's not going to be as significant as these models are showing. And I know that people love to look at these models and just say, look at that, uh, you know, three inches across southeastern Kansas. Again, if you're to take a look at the National Weather Service, they, uh, they show, this is the hardest hit area south of Kansas City, up to half an inch. And they, you know, they say these amounts will be light for a reason. Because they don't think that the thermal profiles are really going to be that supportive. Notice, this is a forecast, right? As you saw, some of these models, if you are to look back, showed up to an inch around St. Louis. The National Weather Service is really calling less than a hundredth of an inch of aceration. Which again, um, there could be up to a fourth of, a, you know, an inch. Which is significant. It could, you know, down some trees and power lines. But it's nothing compared to what these models are showing, which is just absurd. And you have to take this with caution. While there may be a few locations in southern Missouri that pick up an inch, again, with the warm temperatures aloft and the warm temperatures on the surface, it doesn't look to, for it to be promising in terms of that sleet and ice. Now, it may be a bit more significant across Pennsylvania, as they do already have winter storm watches. So obviously, definitely still go to your National Weather Service. Don't just rely on me, but I'm here to kind of tell you, you know, be wary. Uh, there's a lot of uh, forecasts going on calling for one to three inches of ice, which uh, is just uh, not going to happen. So notice that into Missouri and Kansas and Oklahoma, in terms of snowfall, there is, this is what the European or the Canadian is showing, right? Uh, again, this could be a bit more significant, especially with the high-res models. I've been seeing some signs, and the National Weather Service said this themselves. There could be a bit more snow as the models have been trending towards the warmer side of things. 
meaning uh, that they have uh, a bit too much of a warm air in place rather than most likely will be so this might be a bit more snow kansas city north of where the ice will fall maybe up to half a foot into central missouri a bit of snow into s southern kansas again uh, you see this forecast and you may be missing out this could shift either to the north and west south and east and for that you'll just have to keep this monitored stay tuned me i'll update you tomorrow but again national weather service is the best notice northeast could pick up up to a foot of snow at that first wave um, and then in terms of that second uh, wave, you could see a bit more across southern portions of New England. Again, Canadian, not a big uh, advocate for that, uh, for that snow. Take a look at the GFS, right? And notice that obviously this is into today, into New Year's. Sorry, this is the rest of today. This is into tomorrow. Notice uh, a lot of the heavy snow staying still to the south. This is from that first wave. Potentially that snow mixing in on the backside. Now notice, this is into tomorrow and into Friday where we start seeing that priest lift to the north. This is the GFS 12Z, so I apologize about that. That was a bit of an older model run. Still relatively GFS and Canadian agree on track in terms of the snow. Kind of Kansas City, Illinois, so, uh, really the kind of the, the, the tri-state area. I know that's usually Cincinnati, but notice Iowa and into Illinois and Missouri right there, maybe three to four inches. This may be underdone by some of the models, uh, but again... It's, it's, it's a fair estimate because it doesn't look like this will be a blockbuster snowstorm. Um, maybe more of an ice storm, right? Even that, though, an inch or two of ice is not going to... Uh, doesn't look uh, to be uh, appearing. GFS with that second system, the first one does show that snow, right? Up to a foot. That second one, notice, it does show a bit, even into New York City, a few inches, four or five inches. So this is definitely something to watch for. I don't think it will be a blockbuster, but again, then again, you know, these nor'easters sometimes happen really quickly. So that's something to watch for, for sure. And in a long range, notice that the pattern does support some more snowfall, but in this case, the GFS doesn't think there will be an active period, you know, immediately after these two systems. Uh, GFS, uh, high resolution, right? Uh, this is supposedly the upgraded version of the GFS. Notice, shows more of a widespread snow swath, though, again, nothing awfully too heavy other than across Texas and northern Mexico. And then as we push this in, notice, this is the second wave, of, or that second storm right there. A bit of snow across the northeast and into southern Canada with a clipper. But uh, it does not show uh, the, the icing. So for that, I will just go back to the GFS and show you how much ice that model is showing. Again, they're all showing pretty ridiculous amounts of ice. Does not seem too likely. I mean, actually, the GFS is more realistic, showing uh, closer to under half an inch for most areas. Uh, still, though, ridiculously outperforming across some areas of up to an inch and a half. And again, the ingredients for that are not uh, shaping up at this point. Now, let's take a glance at uh, the... Uh, say the european model right the high-res european model often a very good model to look at and let's see so in terms of total snowfall let's see this notice that it doesn't uh, allow us to view the freezing rain accumulation i will uh, show you that on a different website though notice that this is the uh, high res in terms of snowfall it does show a, a decent amount right notice anywhere from uh, two to six seven inches along illinois iowa and again this has shifted further to the south and east from yesterday but again uh, the heaviest snow will be falling across texas and the northeast even with that first wave right and then the second wave potentially um uh dropping a bit more snow quite a bit more snow across the northeast uh not necessarily the coastal areas with the european model but mainly a uh, maine and southeastern canada in terms of the longer range with the european it does keep more snow chances so definitely keep an eye out for that um, let's take a glance now at, I want to show you the, the RDPS, the high resolution model, right? The model that did a very good job with this previous system. So again, here's your time, Thursday, 2 p.m., Thursday, uh, late in the afternoon and into, uh, early Friday morning. It starts tracking into Oklahoma and into Friday during the midday Friday and, sorry, early Friday morning, right? It starts showing snow across Missouri into Kansas, and then it tracks that into Illinois. Notice a few inches, right? A very narrow path, but there could be some pockets of heavier snow, and eventually into the Northeast. Now, this is uh, the European, or the Canadian high-res just starts showing the signs of that second potential nor'easter lake system. So for that, it's too still too far out, but notice a decent amount of snow and nice swath. Uh, nothing too significant in terms of that. In terms of freezing rain, uh, it's uh, you know it shows a bit more, right? And it honestly shows a lot. Uh, this model has been leaning heavily towards the freezing rain 
Again, up to half an inch, maybe a bit more is possible across a few areas. And that would obviously be significant. That's why I'm still calling this a significant storm overall. But a widespread 1 to 2 inch event is not most likely going to occur at this time. Unless a drastic change happens, which uh, usually doesn't. So taking a look at the NAM, right? The North American model, a relatively good model. Didn't do the best with the previous storm, but it had its uh, ups and downs. Um, this is what it shows, and honestly, I think this is more realistic. Up to uh, a quarter of an inch tops into Missouri, it shows quite a bit, I think, still overperforming here. But across Illinois, uh, the Missouri, Indiana area, it's a bit more of what it's accurate. Now, again, this little ice will still be hazardous, and it cause a lot of problems. But, you know, it's not going to be a devastating ice storm. It does show a lot here, which is potentially going to be another area to watch for. I don't think, again, there will be two, three inches. But a few tenths of an inch may fall of ice, which obviously is uh, significant. But again, there's a difference between a few tenths and a few inches. So that's the NAM, right? Let's start uh, quickly. I'm running out of time here, but I want to take a look at the EPS. So these are a bunch of ensemble members. Ensemble means, so the average of what all the European ensembles are showing in terms of snowfall. This is what they're showing for that first uh, system. Notice, this is what they're showing um, for that first system, right? Two, three inches as you go into Illinois and Michigan, and then you get three, four, five, six inches into Oklahoma and Texas, up to 20 inches over there potentially. Uh, that is supported by some models. Into the Northeast, four to five to six inch amounts are possible. If, again, if not over a foot, as I mentioned from that first system, as this is assuming a 10 to 1 ratio, there could be more snow. And now this is the second event, if you recall, that, that nor'easter potential. Notice it does drop quite a bit, and the ensemble average is, you know, not all showing the system, but those that are, are showing a pretty strong one. Uh, maybe not coastal areas overall, but it's getting awfully close to where we have to monitor it. And that is what the European ensembles show. I don't know if they have an option for uh, freezing rain in terms of that. I know that they have snowfall, as that's what I just showed you, right? Um, yeah, I don't think they do. Um, I could just show you, though, that uh, what the European show thinks by itself in particular in terms of uh, the, the, the freezing rain, not as an ensemble mean. So let's take a look at this. This sometimes does glitch out. I clicked on it like three times there. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to show you this. Well, I guess not. I guess it doesn't have an option. I, I'm second guessing myself here. I thought I did. I thought it did have an option. Regardless, um, the European doesn't really show anything different from the other models. It overperforms in terms of the ice. Again, the National Weather Service is there to say that it most likely is overperforming, um, like the rest of the models. And uh, that is basically it, actually. Quickly, I do want to show you the GEFS Ensemble Mean, which is what I just showed you with the European, but this is the GFS family, so kind of a different uh, group, right? Notice uh, it does show a bit more snow across Missouri and into portions of Illinois, and uh, you know even some decent amounts across the Northeast with that first system. And as we track this with the second system, notice it does show a bit of snow into Pennsylvania and upstate New York. So again, not a nor'easter um, yet, maybe. Uh, there could be more of a threat as we get some of the high-res models to come in. The HRR model, in terms of, uh, it goes out to 18 hours, or 48 hours, and it came out. This was a bit old data, as I had to go back a few hours. But this is what it showed again. A lot of snow, minimal ice. I mean, there was sleet. It does start getting more impressive here. But again, for a given location, St. Louis, say, you know, um, let's say it's right there and it will be raining for around one, two, three, four, five, six hours of freezing rain. And again, you may be like six hours of heavy freezing rain. That's definitely an inch or two of ice. Again, a lot of that will be runoff. We'll be running off, a f you know, an ice aceration uh, will be possible. But three inches of ice is not gonna be uh, likely as that won't all stick it'll be mostly running off at that point notice it does show a bit more snow these high-res models show so that is definitely something we'll have to watch for into illinois and missouri and iowa and again a lot of rain and maybe even some severe weather to the south that's uh, definitely not out of the question in terms of total snowfall the herd does show some pretty significant amounts and this is just snow not ice so if this pans out then yeah there could be more of a significant event uh, but we'll have to wait and see as we are a bit in confusion at this point uh rdps or sorry the rap the rap is a another high-res model and let's go back to its 39 hour outlook which just came out a few hour or an hour ago total snowfall um let's see if it's it's struggling for some reason let's just um 
Uh, maybe 10 to 1. Uh, so for some reason, it's not showing. Well, maybe it's just taking a bit to load. Earlier, I, sh I, I saw, and it, well, let's just take a look at the, you know, everything's here kind of on the go to adjust. Let's just take a look at the precip type. So for this, again, the first wave moves off a bit more snow across the northeast, maybe mixing into the Ohio area, southern Ohio tri-state area. Then we see that, you know, that second wave, uh, big, lots of rain. That's going to be the, you know, the deal. Lots of precipitation. And notice that it takes this, a lot of uh, rain, again, freezing rain, sleet, but again, that will be falling so quickly, it won't be all accumulating. Most of it will be running off. Now, in, especially since the temperatures are so marginal. Notice Oklahoma, Missouri right there, more sleet and snow with this model as well, similar to the her model. So if that happens, they could increase the amounts of snow. But so that's basically it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.